Hello and welcome to Smarter Tech. I'm Nick, the EMF guy, Pino. And today I have the pleasure of talking with Michael Cobb, the visionary founder and CEO of ECI Development. How are you, Mike? Hey, I'm great, Nick. I'm glad to be here and I'm looking forward to a, a fun and interesting conversation today. For sure. It's it's actually a conversation I wanted to have for a long while. And I did share a little bit about the project you, you've you been spearheading with, uh, I think, other people uh, yes. about this, this low EMF. And uh, it's called Intentional Sanctuary Living Alternative, ISLA. And this yep. project is quite unique because, you know, I've been in this space since the end of 2016 when I originally published my book. And I realized that many, many people were talking about maybe developing a, a low EMF space for people who either want to live in a low EMF space because, of course, that's a healthier environment to live in overall. But some people who suffer from these EMF-related symptoms, uh, also called electrosensitivity, uh, have been looking for places to live that do not have these exposures. But before we get into, into that, I'm very curious because uh, you have this development company. Uh, let me know a little bit more about the company and then the yeah. story. I, I, it's, I still don't know exactly how it came to be and how on earth you got uh, interested and wanted to concretize this project of low EMF living, which is quite unusual these days, right? Sure. Yeah, it it actually is. You know, the, the the story is pretty simple. You know, my business partner and I started a development company now 28 years ago, and our our whole mission from day one was to serve a North American consumer in Latin America. We started in Belize. We you know we grew to Nicaragua. We're in Costa Rica, Panama. We have projects in Honduras and El Salvador as well. So we we've, we've really become a regional player. But our core mission has always been to serve a North American consumer with a product, A, that they can afford uh, and, and offer the quality of life. Uh, but, you know, in this case, it actually transcends the want uh, and, and it moves to need. Yeah. Right. And, and, and truly, when you look at higher purpose in life. Right. I mean, it, 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 what, what really matters, what drives the significance of your existence here on Earth? Right. And it's the service to others, truly. Uh, and, and, and significance is, is really what we do for others. And so my business partner and I have been very committed to a, a service life. I mean, Rotary was a big part of both of our lives for many years. Uh, we've done a ton of, of, of work in the region. Prior to working there, you know, professionally and profitably, right? Just just being down there, doing things uh, to, to to help others, and so you know, it, it, this this idea of service has always been core to who we are as people. But then our gifting as people, both he and I, is business, right? I I, I could never be a nurse. I mean, you know, I, nurses are wonderful, but they're a special breed of people, and and I'm probably the exact you know 180 degree opposite of a nurse, right? I, I just couldn't be that kind of caring person, you know, one on one. My gifting is business, right? How do you build a business that can be successful in a very challenging environment? Latin America is a very challenging environment to do business, right? How can we be successful there, but at the end deliver something that that that, that the consumer both wants and more importantly, in many cases, needs. And 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 Nick, originally it really had to do with quality of life and cost of living, right? We looked at Social Security in the United States and pension payments coming out of Canada and in the RRSPs, right? And, and we looked at that and we said, you know what? They're gonna be a whole bunch of people, they're gonna get, you know, a thousand, fifteen hundred dollars a month. How are they gonna live well? you know, in in the in North America? And yeah. and the answer is they're probably not. So our first needs-based assessment was based on quality of life and cost of living. Um, but then a woman about, gosh, it's almost two years ago now, a woman approached uh, us. Her name is Karen Rich. I think maybe you know Karen. Sure. Um, she, she approached us and said, hey, we, we've got this whole group of folks who are who are, are, are highly sensitive. I mean, her analogy is: look, everyone's arsenic sensitive, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, right. You, you're, everyone's arsenic sensitive. Some people just show the symptoms sooner than than others, right? And with EMF, we're all being affected by it, right? And and truly, Nick, it was the first time anyone had ever brought it to my attention. Yeah. I think I think one time I'd seen pictures of people holding the fluorescent bulbs underneath the you know the the the, the electric wires, and I'm like, holy smokes! I mean, like you know, they're lighting up, right? Yeah. Anyway, but that that was my exposure to this concept in general. But Karen 
brought it up and said, look, there are a whole bunch of people who are sick. They're sickened, like they're being affected. Uh, you know, the symptoms are symptomatic. They're symptomatic of this, this stuff. Can you build a community at Grand Pacifica for for folks that that need this uh, sanctuary? And 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 the answer was, I don't know. I, I don't yeah. know, Karen. But but let's explore it a little bit and find out. So that that's the story of how kind of how we got to you know where we where we started this project anyway. Yeah, so I guess you get the idea and it must have sounded a little bit crazy at first. Is there a market for it? Like after that, what what did Karen do to get your attention that there might be a potential market for these people looking for a low EMF or even, you know, low toxic environment? Uh, yeah. And, yeah. Well, and, and low toxic is very good because we've, we've since hired a building biologist, Kathy Cook, because it's not just the EMF, right? It's it's the it's the the the, the chemicals that off gas of, of you know, yeah. carpets and formaldehydes from particle board and all that kind of stuff. So there's a whole range of other things that come For into sure. play from a healthy living perspective. But, um, you know, the reason Karen found us was because back in 2004, we actually installed fiber. We were the first fiber to the home network in mm. all of Central America. And we got some great PR about it. So I guess she was Googling around to see, you know, who didn't have Wi-Fi, right? Like, you know, right, who who had the the fiber uh, or, or, you know, connectivity uh, that way wired, right? No, it's not really wired, but anyway, you get the idea. Um, yeah. But, and, and so she found us that way. But, but you know, Nick, I've been speaking at conferences like Anarchapolco. Jeff Berwick and I are, have been friends for, for many years. I speak at his conference every year. I speak at other conferences that that some people would say are a little bit out there, right? The, the mainstream, if you draw the bell curve of society, you know, I mean, people that 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 go to Anarchapolco or probably folks listening to this podcast, that they're not in the middle of that bell curve as quote unquote normal people, right? We're, yeah. we're on the ends of it somewhere. And, and I've always been on the end of it as well. And so I was open to the idea, open to the possibility. I just didn't know anything about it, right? I mean, it was just an ignorance thing on my part. So she waded into it. And then she started to talk about the various communities, whether they were online, Facebook, Reddit, people like you. She brought you up early on and said, yeah, check out this guy's book and his podcast and then some other people. And and she gave me links. to, And so I dug into it and I realized that, yeah, there's this there's this real need. There are people who are sick. And 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 then it became a question of can we help them? Right. Because that's that's sort of the whole next thing. Right. You know, it, what what is it? You know, help me understand it. But then can we help them and can we deliver something that that works? Uh, and that was really the the next step in the process. Got it. So you you have this idea for a new project that's in this one is in Nicaragua. Uh, why, right. The, right. the is uh, do you call it Isla? Is, it, is that the, isla. the right? They, they say Isla in Nicaragua. The I is an E sound. Isla. Yeah, I, but, I would yeah. also do Isla because of my French, uh, yeah. French Canadian, you know. So right. Isla, let's call it Isla. I think it's sexy. Uh, so Isla, the Isla project is in Nicaragua and uh, you brought Katie Cook, who is widely recognized as a very, very competent bu building biologist. So I'm glad. Oh. And and then and then what happens? Uh, w did you? Uh, I know that we sent a newsletter for it. We told it, it's just word to mouth. But clearly, you must have seen some interest from some people to say we're going to invest in this because it. I, I don't know what's involved. You know, I never built a, a project like this in real estate, but that's a huge, I, I don't know if it's a leap of faith, but you got to know there's a market for it to to start working on the project and make it a reality. Sure. Well, look, it, there is a leap of faith, of course, always, right? But the nice thing is, is the way we've built our business, we, we've really really built uh, what I'm going to call the foundation. And so for us to be able to add pieces to it um, works. Really, I mean, again, we have a fiber network. We have, you know, we have a, a water network. We have a, a, a electrical network. right? So we have road networks. Right. So we've built the basic infrastructure. So for us to be able to add a neighborhood really is is it, it it's it's as development goes fairly easy, right? Nothing's yeah. ever easy, but, you know, right? Yeah. But as opposed to creating something out of nothing, it's it's much easier than that. 
And 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 the only thing about the Eastland neighborhood is it's actually in a little bit of a bowl. Like the the geography of the land is important too. So it's in a little bit of a bowl, so that the readings uh, around the site itself, open just in the woods, right in the trees, uh, are 0.6 microwatts per square meter. And so it's a very very uh, and, and and Kathy has a whole report. In fact, we're happy to share that with you or with any of your your Tremendous. listeners. Nick. Her entire report, it's uh, it's 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 uh, open to the public. So she she gave us the rights to distribute that um, anyway. So we're happy to do it. And it shows the various readings around the site, but anywhere from, you know, point two, point three up to about one, but an average of about point six on the site. And that's before you build a building and construction materials in Nicaragua ha have always been, you know, concrete uh, or, or, you know, cementous materials. Right. So you you use concrete. It's a it's a construction methodology, very familiar to the to the labor uh, supply there. So uh, you're not really doing anything exotic or different. Right. So you're just building concrete homes, you're putting clay tile roofs. Uh, and, and when you do that. I mean, it just drops one more time because the, you yeah. know, the mitigation is is, is significant. And then for folks that really, really want sort of the next level, I mean, you've got special paints, window treatments, you can wrap in a Faraday fabric. So all of these things can be added to the base home. But but because of the location and because of the construction methodology that's that's used as a standard, it, 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 the, 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 the EMF uh, levels are, are, are very, very low inside the homes. But then what was kind of exciting, and again, this was something that Karen and, and Kathy and some others really brought to the table was, you know, we, we've always said there's going to be no cell phone use, no routers, no Wi-Fi in this neighborhood, right? Um, but uh, Karen and, and some others, you know, said, look, wouldn't it be really cool if we could if we could actually prohibit the use of cell phones and Wi-Fi technology of all kinds within this neighborhood, inside the home and out? Uh, and and we've actually uh, we we've done that. We we we've stated that to be the baseline for the community. And one of the things this gets a little technical, but it's really important, Nick. Um, you know, in, in civil law systems, and I guess Quebec is probably a civil law jurisdiction, um, different from common law, which is throughout the rest of Canada and and much of the U.S. Right? Civil law is is proscriptive. Like you have to state it specifically for it to be. Uh, uh, you know, legal, right? And so there's no spirit of the law, so to speak, right? It has to be, you know, formally written. And so what we've been able to do is get a, a very specific type of title in Nicaragua called horizontal property regime, where you write a you write into the title itself the rules that bind every owner of that property into the future to the exact same rule set. Um, wow. Right. So, so right. So this, this is really important. So, you know, if somebody buys it today, they sell it to someone, we don't even know about it, right? They just transfer it to somebody else. And that person says, I'm going to use my cell phone and put a, you know, put a router out back so we can sit by my pool and, you know, do Wi-Fi. No, no, no. I mean, w the, the title itself allows that homeowners group to come in and ask them to please remove it um, and, 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 and legally to do so. So this is important. It preserves the sanctuary Forever. Well, forever is a long time, but, you know, generally. Like, forever, yeah, right? well, I think the this is the only way it could work for certain individuals. Uh, maybe some people will live there that could handle some of these exposures. But I saw the level of sensitivity in some individuals. And it's just a reality that even just one Wi-Fi router from a neighbor might be bothersome. And right. in today's society, let's say in Montreal, you wouldn't go to your neighbor and say, you know, you remove your router <laughs> they would laugh at you and then <laughs> legally speaking you can't do anything so it's a bit of a losing proposition but it's nice to know that uh you're creating the community the right way so i think hiring the right people taking the readings and then yeah. making sure that there's also some sort of restriction on what people can install because again some people might be tempted okay i'll go to nicaragua buy a property in isla and then make it super smart right and smart mm -hmm. is another buzzword for wireless so yeah. uh, my colleague brian uh, hoyer who's an emf mitigation specialist in the u.s saw this home that had around 200 different sensors and emf emitting 
wireless, you know, Bluetooth, uh, yep. Internet of Things uh, sensors. Every bulb is connected. Every outlet, the dishwasher, the 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 plant pots can tell you when the plant need needs to be watered. So all these uses are uh, might have a little bit of convenience, but in the end, it creates so much electrosmog inside homes that we cannot simply not recommend that. But at the same time, I, I heard recently from a colleague that in other parts of the world and and probably in it's probably technology that is available in uh throughout the world in fact you can have these smart homes that are completely wired and, mm. and there are certain companies that specialize in it and for security reasons that might be something that people want to look into but also for health that you can still have the automation you can still have every yeah. light bulb that can be controlled through you know uh, just a a pin pad or something like yeah, that that right. is different or even through the internet with an iPad or a laptop that is wired in you know Correct. fiber optics and ethernet cable and then you can control everything if you're into the, those things but i think most people that that look into low emf living wouldn't be interested but just it's just to remind people that technology can be used at at its full potential, even the automation stuff, the exciting, cool features, but it can be wired. So you actually don't yeah. need the wireless. So even if you you bought you bought the Isla property and you installed everything smart, if it's not wireless, it's wired. Probably you know no one would have a problem with that. It's really uh, up to you. So it, it's great to see that um, the building biology guidelines are. are you know, followed as best as uh, you can. And what about yep. construction? Um, I guess compared to other projects, the construction, are there certain requirements or certain things that uh, building biologists brought to the table to make sure that, for example, uh, something that commonly can happen in construction is wiring errors that can lead to elevated magnetic fields. So do you have uh, plans to, to get uh, Kathy Cook or another professional to review homes before people take possession, for example? Gosh, Nick, great question. Yeah, so we have an architect, uh, Grant Montgomery, his wife, Sasha. Uh, they, they live at Grand Pacific. They've been down there about three years now. He's an architect. He's been working uh, directly with Kathy uh, on home design. So she counseled okay. him or consulted him, I guess, on how to design the homes. So, for example, uh, all the electrical you know, panels and, 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 and big devices, right? Whether it's the, you know, the washer, dryer, the refrigerator, anything that creates a, a large electrical demand is located behind another wall. Your bedroom is uh, as far away from that as possible. So oh, you great. eliminate yeah. a lot of the dirty electricity. Um, but she actually tested for that, by the way, we, we've got a really good system and, and that's in her report as well, uh, all of the the electrical systems. Um, but yeah, she would be working with us. We'll hire her again to be the consultant on bringing electricity into the neighborhood. Uh, and, and so, right, it's making sure that we minimize, you can't eliminate, but minimize to the greatest degree possible, you know, dirty electricity, uh, uh, the home designs do that as well. Uh, but then, you know, how things are installed. By the way, can I just mention, I, I love the fact that you brought up the, the, the smart technology, right? People, I mean, you, you bring the fiber in, you put Ethernet drops in every room or and the client can pick. But I mean, you know, several in the living room, whatever, three or four around the room, who cares, right? You're just putting putting these drops in and you can tie in with Ethernet. Um you know, I, I think that some people want that smart technology. I've got to say that I'm happy to get up and, and go turn off the light or stick my hand down in the plant and see if the soil is <laughs> yeah, dry too. or not. <laughs> you know, right? But I mean, but right, but but because you've got fiber, you've got this incredible bandwidth, right? So you can yeah. have that smart house. Um, but but again, everything wired, right? So yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And so what is the... Oh, can I, can yeah, I one, no one more thing on the yeah. construction real quick? Yeah. I, I touched on it before with the concrete construction. Uh, you know, the, 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 the other piece of it is sort of that, that, that chemical health, right? The chemical sensitivities, right? Because Nicaragua uses concrete, no fly ash, by the way, there's no fly ash in the, in the concrete. So, uh, uh, so concrete, real tiles, whether it's clay tile or ceramic tiles uh, on the floors, uh, real hardwoods, almost, I mean, no particle board, uh, you know, right? I mean, I guess if you wanted that, you could put it in your house, but we don't do it as standard. I mean, the standard house has solid hardwoods because that's what's available, right? Uh, and so a lot of natural materials, things like that, that, that really 
again, dramatically reduce the amount of any off-gassing of chemicals. So, so the construction methodologies themselves provide a lot of that with, with little or no enhancement, which is pretty cool. That's good. Yeah, the, this is this is good. And and for people who might not be familiar with building biology that much, you have some building biologists that are just specialized in EMS, but some of them also are specialized in air quality, water quality, uh, yep. finding mold, eliminating mold, and also yep. radon, for example, and all these environmental exposures. You know, EMF is important, but of course, I also talk about other environmental toxins. And whether you feel, you know, chemically sensitive or not, you don't need more, you don't need to breathe in more chemicals. So all of these just create uh, a health your home. And then of course, it's up to you to also make sure that what you bring into your home is is as clean. And that's a, a story for another day. But I want to focus also on, uh, on let's say, the, the state of development for this project, because as we're posting this at the end of August uh, 2024, what is the state of the project? Uh, let's say if people are even remotely interested, are there, is there still room to reserve homes? How does the process work and what is the timeline here absolutely so grand pacifica is a, a, a an existing community it's been around since uh, uh 2000 i guess 2006 we opened our first homes uh we're working on the infrastructure prior to that um, but there are about 200 homes now maybe 80 to 100 full-time residents uh, uh it swells a little bit in the winter time canada a lot of canadians come down as snowbirds which is wonderful um but but 80 to 100 people living on property year round now so it's it's really a village uh and and we've got several different neighborhoods so typically what happens nick is you know people we we encourage people to come visit please come visit uh just the first thing right just just you know whatever four or five days a week just get on an airplane i know that's tough right for a lot of folks the whole airport airplane thing um yeah. but but you know can, can, we have some homes uh grant and sasha have have designed uh some some mitigation measures uh some some uh faraday fabric uh, curtains and some other things that we put into these concrete homes that do a tremendous job of mitigating the EMF already. So we've got some very low EMF homes uh, for folks to rent if they want to come rent for a week or a month or six months, right? And come down and try it out, so to speak. See it, try it out. Um, so we have we give folks that ability. Uh, and then the goal is to begin construction of the new neighborhood in early 2025. So everybody's got plenty of time to get down, visit, see if it's something we want to do. And, and what we're hearing from a lot of people, which is tremendous, is that while their home is being built in the new neighborhood, uh, they want to live at Grand Pacifica. They want to you know, be, be there while their home is being built. And again, with uh, the, the existing concrete homes, with some small mitigating factors on some of the windows, uh, with the Faraday uh, uh, shades and the Faraday uh, fabrics, uh, you know, we can really get the EMF inside almost any home at Grand Pacifica down to very, very low levels. So yeah, we're seeing that, we're excited. And and I think uh, I, I think we're gonna be off to the races uh, first part of next year. And it'll be exciting to build this uh, this this neighborhood uh, because you know, it, it is about community too, right? It, 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 you know, and, and I would say that the community of folks that are already at Grand Pacifica have come from what I call the tail ends of the bell curve, right? They're, they're already people who are way outside the norm, whatever that means. Yeah, yeah. And so, so folks that come down with an EMF uh, uh, sensitivity or EMF symptomatic, uh, you know, th 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 they're going to find a community of people that already understand that, accept it, uh, and 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 so it, it it's it's already there. The community's already there. And now you could take that and you can actually make it much more specific and physical with a neighborhood of folks, right? That, that, you know, that at the end of the day, I think all of us are looking for a place where we can live, be around other people who we can really relate to, and 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 with a lack of judgment, right? Like nobody's going to judge us on on our beliefs, uh, and 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 that community already exists. But when you can make it even more specific and find people that really understand your situation because they're living one very similar, uh, those types of bonds and connections really add the, what I would say the, the true quality of life. We can find a community of our peers and 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 be in a place that's that's wonderful and and enriching and and nourishing to our spirit. So that's what Isla will be.
Hey, let me interrupt this podcast for just a second. I want to tell you about one of the EMF protection or health supporting tools I really believe in and which also helped me finance the costs associated with creating this show. In the last several years, I said no to the vast majorities of companies who asked me to endorse their so-called EMF blocking products. And there's a lot of products out there, including EMF blocking clay cases, platforms, clothing, you name it, that are very poorly designed and could in fact expose you to more EMFs when you use them. So essentially doing more harm than good. So which I don't want for any of my readers and followers. Shield Your Body is a company that is one of their rare exceptions and that does things the right way. The company has been created by R. Blank, who is the son of the famous EMF scientist Dr. Martin Blank from Columbia University. And R. is an expert at what he does and is also a true honest EMF educator that is completely aligned with my recommendations and values. So yes, it's true that reducing your time of use from your phone and other devices and creating distance from them, like using speakerphone on a phone, for example, will always remain your first line of defense against EMF effects. But the reality is that certain products that are properly designed can help you reduce your exposure and your risks associated with this technology even further. So Shield Your Body designs the only solutions I'm currently endorsing to help you carry your cell phone more safely. So those so-called phone cases. And to learn more, visit shieldyourbody.com and enter the coupon EMF guy to get 15% off your entire order. That's shieldyourbody.com with the coupon code EMF guy. Back to the podcast. That's tremendous. And I have a hard question to to end the conversation with. Sure. Uh, some people told me that's a handful. I, I must say I mostly got uh, very good feedback when I talked oh. about Isla. A lot of people, uh, it gives them hope that at least, you know, there there's this project that I think is quite unique in the world at the moment. Uh, I, and if someone can correct me in the comments, please do, because I want to hear about all the projects. But some people have tried to uh, come up with projects for low EMF zones. And so far, this is the only real estate project I've seen that uh, is actually taking this very seriously. So really yeah. props to you on this. But Thank some you. people tell me, Nick, Nicaragua, is it really safe? And I I looked into it. I know that Karen sent me plenty of information. Your your company also sent me plenty of information. I don't know what to think of it, but when I look at the statistics, let's say objectively, it seems like the fear of certain countries in South America seems to be overblown uh, compared to the objective reality. What do you respond to, especially Americans, but anyone who reaches out to you and says, Mike, I don't know about Nicaragua. Is it a safe country? What is the political situation? And do I really want to buy a home there? I, I don't I don't feel good about this. Yeah. So I think there's maybe kind of certainly two levels of safety. Let me start there. And if we, you know, sure. if there may be a third too. Um, let me start with the easy one, the political, you know, political safety, right? Um, you, you know, Nicaragua wants foreign investors. They treat foreign investors very, very well. Uh, The Constitution, legally, in the Constitution, treats foreigners and domestics equally under the law. So there's no, like, some countries, by the way, like, for example, Mexico, Argentina, Honduras, uh, these countries actually make a distinction between foreigners and nationals Mm. in property ownership rights, right? They, They make a distinction. Nicaragua treats nationals and foreigners equally under the Constitution. So that's pretty significant in in my mind. From a practical standpoint, the political realities, they want foreign investment. Uh, They they love Canadians. They love Americans. They might not love U.S. foreign policy specifically. Canadians are pretty good at staying out of that kind of stuff. (laughs) Yeah. That seems to, you know, stir it up, whatever. Anyway, but they don't like U.S. foreign policy, but they like Americans. They, They, you know, they like Canadians, right? So that, that, Political piece of it, I, I think, is pretty pretty easy, and we've never had an issue. We've been working there now for goodness twenty four years, yeah, twenty four years. Um, personal safety is another uh, another element, and 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 the statistics actually are pretty strong in favor of low crime, 
uh, low violent crime, low homicide rates. But, you know, there's the old saying, right, Nick, don't confuse me with the facts, uh, you know, right. Um, and, and I would think actually your listeners are probably very attuned to facts, right? Because there's all the noise out there about how great, you know, Wi-Fi and all this stuff is, but the facts actually tell a very different story and your yeah. listeners dig into the facts, right? Um, you know, I have, uh, by the way, this is my new book. I don't know if, you, if I'm allowed to talk about it or not, but I want to open sure, up. Sure, please do. Uh, I was not aware you had a, a book. What was yeah, the title? But, Show it, please. Uh, oh, okay. First, yeah. Uh, how to how buy to... your home overseas okay. and get it right the first time. That's the okay. key. Right. Get it right the first time. Right. And it's For on sure. Amazon. It's a pre-order till next month. Michael K. Cobb. If you just type Michael K. Cobb and Amazon up, it comes. But okay. here's my here's my safety statistic right here. I don't know if yeah. you can see. OK, that's my wife and daughter's. You know, we're, we're you know, they're little blondies running around Nicaragua. We don't look Nicaraguan at all. We lived there for 14 years and in 14 years, never once had one incident. And and I think that crime is largely behavioral. Right. I mean, look, lightning can strike anytime. Right. Lightning can just strike. Right. You can get hit by a bus or whatever. Right. But 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 a lot of crime and safety is is behavioral. Right. If you're home in bed at 10 o'clock at night. Right. Probably not much is going to happen. If you're out looking for trouble at four in the morning, you know, like, yeah, something might happen to you. Right. And so our experience, the experience of many of our friends and other expats have been yeah, safe, tranquil, tranquil, wonderful. Uh, my wife in, 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 over 14 years probably broke down on the side of the road two or three times the flat tire, whatever. People would stop and change the tire and help her. Right. I mean, we had such a wonderful experience. Um, but but the bottom line is this. If you're concerned about safety and security, Forget about what anyone else says. Forget about the statistics. Forget about the news media. Get on an airplane and spend four or five days in Nicaragua. See the country with your own eyes through your own experience. And if you feel like it's safe, well, then it probably is, um, you know, because it's the, the, the data backs that up. Right. But it's all about our our filter, our experience. So come visit. Come visit. Yeah, that's a great advice. And I remember I, I had to travel to Ecuador a couple of times and uh, it's not a country I really knew anything about. And my wife was a little bit concerned. She said, well, what's the situation in Ecuador? I said, well, you know, I don't know, Jen. So I went on the Internet, looked at crime rates, at uh, homicides, at, and, and then I said, Well, it looks like it's it's safer than the U.S. <laughs> and normally when I go to the U.S., yes. you know, I don't look at stats like homicide rates and this and that. Even if I go in, I mean, any city, I'm like, oh, the U.S. is safe, you know. But right. somehow we have this vision of certain other countries where, oh, it's super dangerous. And And don't get me wrong, some people will come back at me in the comment and say, well, Ecuador, you know, you have a lot of drug cartels. And that's correct there's it's mainly in certain cities which if you can you should avoid you, you don't go in like uh, guayaquil on the docks at night looking for oh. trouble you know there are certain areas for sure yes i i admit that they're probably dangerous but the same can be said to certain european countries that we uh think are safe like Paris, even, yeah. uh, you know, as certain areas that you don't go there and it's, let's say, tourists are, are discouraged from going. Certain right. U.S. cities as well, certain neighborhoods Absolutely. are just known to have higher crime rates. And, you know, it, it's just, I think, logical sense. At the same time, if, yeah, you just need to make up your own mind. But I think you have to give it a fair assessment also. And I, what I could gather from a lot of people that were very skeptical is they had a lot of fear, but a lot of it was just based on their impression of what right. they think the safety of the country might be. But, you know, it's just, yeah, we, we have to make up our own mind about, about these things. And then what is the safety of the entire country of uh, or of certain areas is not necessarily the reality everywhere in the country. So that's where absolutely looking at the experience of certain expats, uh, like you, we cannot lump all of Canada in, in one sentence. Is it safe? Not safe. Well, well what part of Canada, right? The, yeah. So it, it will vary greatly depending on the city, the neighborhood. And then, yeah, it, it's just, it's just, I think common sense. So 
Uh, to me, people have to make up their own mind about is it, do you think it's a it's a safe neighborhood it's a safe space but i think i i have to recognize that it's especially uh, great to see that you have rental spaces for people that want to come in because of course as you uh am said very well i think stated very well some electro sensitives uh just struggle to travel at all and then if they arrive there and they're stuck in a hotel with Wi-Fi, they, for them, it might be, you know, it, it might not even be an option to kind of go visit. So I'm glad you have these accommodations. And it just shows me that you are uh, you you are ahead of the curve, uh, Mike, in a big way in understanding and respecting that certain people are feeling very unwell in these environments. So uh, thank you for having this compassion for people. And then uh, I'm very glad that you went ahead with this project and i hope that this video and you know other people talking about it just makes uh you know your company or other companies aware that there's a new market for not only you know do we want homes that look good or you know the design aspect and and maybe the lifestyle but also specific <laughs> things about the environment need to be cleaned up and i think that um uh, by by kind of taking this leap of faith and 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 working on it, you're you're actually changing the world, uh, your own way. So um, I'm I'm excited to hear more about this project in the future. Do you have anything you wanted to share about what's coming up? You said uh, construction 2025. Then I guess you're gonna see how things go with sales and and how how much interest there there is, right? Absolutely. Look, I, I I think just you know I I thank you for your for your really kind words and and I, I hope I hope that we can be an inspiration for other companies like ours to do the same thing we're doing. Yeah. You know, I, I, even in Nicaragua, if if two or three other communities pop up, that's wonderful. I mean, there are hundreds of thousands, if not millions, of people who who need this product, right? For sure. And, and, we can only serve like you know one percent or something. I'm a tiny percent, right? Um, so I hope that we become an inspiration of factual, like, hey, these guys did it. We can do it too. And 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 these types of neighborhoods and communities spring up all, all over the world, Canada, the U.S., and 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 around the world. So I I, I hope that's the case. Um, and 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 the other thing, uh, Nick, is I just want to thank you for being out there, you know, in 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 a tough space, right? It is a tough space where you are, right? And and uh, and you're out there getting the word out, the good word out, the factual information that people need to have on a very regular basis, and 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 the consistency over time. You said 2016. I mean, that consistency over time. What's that? Uh, eight, eight years, right? Eight, eight yep. years, yeah. Um, you know, like th that's critically important because a lot of things come, they go, they come, they go. Right. But when you've got eight years of consistency and you're just getting started. So, <laughs> so. yeah, exactly. I'm just I'm turning to 37. I feel like I have uh, at least uh, 20 to 30 Another years 50? before oh, before 50. maybe, you know, I move on to something else. But 50. at the moment, on, Nick. yeah, you're selling yourself short, man. You're going into your 80s. OK, so. <laughs> oh, maybe. Well, maybe I'll, I'll eventually switch to another topic or I don't know, you know, uh, do pottery or painting or something else with my life. But so far, okay. I mean, I feel excited about this work still. And and then when I discover the truth is, Mike, when I discover projects like this, or I hear about a new scientist or a doctor that did something great, it just excites me. So, so yeah. this these type of interviews, I'm like, wow, this is this is new. Finally, we have a project we can talk about. Or, for example, I'll be interviewing very soon someone that created a safer type of tablet that doesn't have the blue light emission. So, it just okay. inventors, you know. Yeah. And now it's real estate. I'm like, well, this is quite unique, but. I'm excited to get the project out there. And uh, again, congrats on, you know, get, getting out there man, on, a, on a project that has uh, just another flavor to it and that can accommodate people with these sensitivities and, and just people that want to be healthy. And I think we're just at the very beginning of oh. the exponential curve of people whose health is the top priority. Uh, yep. So even those that are not electro hypersensitive, I think many people will say, you know what? I want to live the health yes I can. And yep. if I end up in Nicaragua or another part of the world in the middle of a community that is cleaner, I can still do my work online. And many people do, doctors do virtual yes. 
consultations, you know, and so many different jobs can be done online uh, yep. in an environment that is pristine. So I see that as the future. And I think I think in, you know, we can have another conversation in 10 years and you're going to be very happy about this new direction because I'm pretty sure that the demand will just explode over time. We agree, and we're excited about what's already happening, but also what those trend lines indicate for where it's going. Um, and we're just happy to be able to, you know, be here. You know, 28 years in business now, right? To have built the platform to serve this whole new group of folks uh, looking for a healthier lifestyle. And I think healthier is the right way because it's not just, you know, electro sensitivity, right? It's it's the chemicals, it's the eating organic, it's it's the whole range of the health piece and. Uh, yeah, so we're we're just we're just in a great position to be able to, you know, serve folks looking for that and and we're we're definitely already doing it, but again, the trend lines are you know powerfully strong in an upward direction. So Perfect. And if you're interested in hearing more about Isla, we have a link underneath the video with all the information. And of course, I'll, I'll probably link to, uh, well, the, your website, Grand Pacifica, the entire project. And I know that so far, you know, anyone that sends questions my way, I refer them to you guys. So feel free if you have questions, concerns, even very technical questions. I know you guys are equipped with the best professionals to answer these these EMF questions. So please do not hesitate. If you're right in the comment, I'll make sure to um, to also uh, send you to the right links. And uh, Mike, thanks again for your presence. And I hope that we can have an update in a few years uh, if everything yep. goes well and uh, talk about the future developments. Nick, I have a better idea. In three years, why don't you plan to come do this interview from there and we'll do it together in Nicaragua. Okay? Uh, I thought about it there, during the interview. I hesitated, <laughs> but I'm like, yeah, I need to, I need to come visit. If I do come visit, I hope three to years. have, yeah. Okay. In three years. And three then years. I'll have hopefully a video team and we can record what it's like there and take readings yeah. and it will be amazing. But I think this is the type of stuff that uh, will fascinate people if they can see what it's like and that it's real and we have the readings that are different from other homes in other parts of the world. Of course, they're going to be tremendously lower and much cleaner. So just getting the information out there about this project could be tremendous. So I'll take you up on the invite right. and I cannot wait to see you in Good. person. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Again, thanks for having me. And uh, yeah, we'll look forward to serving folks. Uh, reach out. We're, we're here to help help anyone who's uh, who's looking. So thank you so much. Take care. In case this wasn't already obvious, the information provided in this podcast is not intended to replace medical advice. We always recommend that you review this information with a functional medicine practitioner or environmental medicine doctor who is up to date with the latest information on the dangers of EMFs and the best practices around electro hypersensitivity, just to name these two things. And if you want to support my work, please consider sharing this episode with people you care about. You can also invest in my book, courses, or recommended products found at theemfguy.com. Thank you.